Unit 7. Newspapers. Reading. Hold the front page. 2,000 years ago. There were no newspapers. When something important happened, people told each other about it. News travelled slowly. Sometimes it was weeks before people heard about a battle or the death of a king. More than a thousand years ago. The Chinese government wrote news on silk. It was news about what the government was doing. It did not tell people about other things that were happening. 400 years ago. The first newspaper appeared in Germany. It was printed every week. It took a long time to print all the copies. 200 years ago. The new printing presses could print much more quickly and newspapers were sold on the streets every day. Now. We have newspapers in the morning and in the evening every day of the week and millions of papers are sold all over the world. Some newspapers have lots of pages and sometimes there is a separate magazine inside it too. Reporters go to the scene of a news story and find out what happened. They write about it and photographers take pictures. The editor reads the reporter's work and decides what will be in the paper. If there are mistakes, the editor will change some words. Sometimes an editor says, hold the front page. This means a story is very good and will appear on the front page instead of something else. It is very exciting for the reporter who wrote it. The story on the next page was written by a young reporter. It is front page news. Blackdown Daily News. Lucky to be alive. Joe Carver, rescued yesterday from the Blackdown Hills. A father and daughter saved the life of an injured climber yesterday. Their quick actions prevented a terrible disaster, said Bill Day of the search and rescue team. Jenny Brown found the phone that saved the climber's life. Jenny Brown and her father were walking in the Blackdown Hills yesterday. They found rock climber Joe Carver lying at the bottom of Blackdown Cliff. Jenny said, we haven't got a mobile phone, so we couldn't call anyone. The man was unconscious and he had bad injuries. While her father was putting a blanket over the man, Jenny noticed a mobile phone under his body. When she pulled it from under him, she realised it was connected to the search and rescue team. Team leader Bill Day said, Joe Carver phoned us, but then he suddenly stopped speaking. We didn't know where he was. We waited for a long time. Then we heard Jenny's voice. The rescue helicopter went straight to the cliffs and picked up the climber. Pilot Fred Hall said, I have been in the rescue team for 20 years and Joe Carver is the luckiest man I know. Snow was starting to fall and he almost died of cold. Last night, Joe Carver was recovering in hospital. He said, I have climbed mountains since 2001. I have never fallen before, but I won't climb alone next time. Blackdown Cliff, where Joe Carver fell. The search and rescue team helicopter picked up the injured man. Pupil's Book, Unit 7, page 80. Grammar in Conversation. Activity 1. Listen and read. Have you always lived in Blackdown? No. When I was little, we lived in a village in the country. So how long have you lived here? We've lived here for eight years. Do you live in a house or an apartment? We've got an apartment in Sun Street. It's on the top floor. Lucky you. We're on the ground floor. Where do you live? 
in that new apartment block in Park Road. We've been there since August. Pupils book, Unit 7, page 81. Spelling. Compound nouns are made from two words put together. News. Paper. Newspaper. Pupils book, Unit 7, page 81. Spelling. Activity 1. Listen and say the words. Snowman. Newspaper. Football. <coughs> Sunglasses. Toothache. Supermarket. Pupils book, Unit 7, page 81. Activity 3. Listen and say. Big house, small house, very, very tall house, castle, cottage, hole in the wall house, houseboat, boat house, snow house, tree house, palace, penthouse, dog house, greenhouse, home. Pupils book, unit 7, page 83. Listening. Activity 2. Look. Listen. And read. Tim versus Slug, part one. Jamie and Tim were good friends. They were in the same class at school, and they spent time together after school, too. They both loved playing computer games. I win! There was only one problem. At school, there was a boy called Kevin Brown. Everyone called him Slug. And Slug was a bully. Come here, you. You're a bully, Slug. Leave him alone. Slug just didn't like Tim. Why not? Why doesn't he like me? He's hated me since I arrived at this school. Don't worry about him. He's just jealous. Perhaps Slug was jealous. Tim was good at sports. Go! Slug was not. Whoa! Tim was very clever. He was especially good at maths. Excellent work, Tim. Well done. Slug was not. Very bad work, Kevin. Do it again. The other boys liked Tim, but they didn't like Slug. Slug had only one friend, and his name was Snail. Hello, Snail. Hello, Slug. Slug and Snail were horrible to Tim. On Monday, they hid his lunchbox. Where's my lunch? I'm sure it was in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> On Tuesday, they took his sports kit and threw it out of the window. Where's my sports kit? I know I put it in my bag this morning. <laughs> On Wednesday, they took his English homework and made paper planes with it. Where's my English homework? It was in my bag. I know it was. Mrs. Thompson, the English teacher, was very angry with Tim. This is not good enough, Tim. You must do your homework. It's very important. I did do it, Mrs. Thompson. Really, I did. Well, where is it? I don't know. Well, you must stay after school and do it again. Yes, Mrs. Thompson. So, Tim stayed at school and wrote his English homework again. He was really angry. It's not fair. I did my homework, but somebody took it. 
I had my sports kit, but somebody took it. I had my lunchbox, but somebody took it. And I know who that somebody is. That evening, Tim went to Jamie's house. They talked in Jamie's room. I'm fed up with Slug and Snail. I know. They're horrible bullies. Don't worry. We'll get our revenge. Really? How can we do that? 